That's what I told my wife. Maybe she needs to start contributing SRS again. But that's when I started to read on the fine print and realized this. We're going to dive on right to it. You know, budget 2023, it's more money, correct? Because every year we are so conditioned. These are the CDC vouchers, housing grants, baby bonus. So budget equals to more money is given to you, correct? Wrong. The answer is actually, it depends. So it depends on what? You know, at the most extreme, basically, if you are a single and high income earner, then quite possibly you are negatively impacted. And I'll explain why in a while. If I want to use a simple phrase to describe budgets, it seems to me that it's always take from the rich and give it to the poor. I actually do support giving, giving to the masses, giving to the needy. And if you also agree, smash the like button. Now, giving is important. If I don't agree with that, I wouldn't be starting you know, the George Tan bursary. I'm donating $10,000 a year to NTU, my alma mater. And this really helped needy students. So giving is actually a very important part of society. It gives everyone from different backgrounds a fighting chance to succeed in their own lives. But to give, we need to take it from somewhere. And the first part of where government is taking is actually from luxury cars. That's why I have this previous song, buy a Mazda, don't buy Maserati. And I think it's good, but I think it's also not enough. If you check around for COE, you realize that Cat B, which is the Mazda I'm driving, is right now at COE more than $105,000. I don't think that will impact the demand for cars and COE prices. I much rather government also levy a heavy tax for families who are owning a second or third car. I think that makes sense. It gives families a better chance to afford a car. With that out of the way, let's move on to the second part of where government is actually taking from the rich. And this is actually coming from the property segment. You realize over here, one big change is for high-end properties. And let me pull up what DPM Lawrence Wong had to share. For residential properties, the portion of the value of the property in excess of $1.5 million and up to $3 million will be taxed at 5%, while debt in excess of $3 million will be taxed at 6%, up from the current rate of 4%. The changes are expected to affect 15% of residential properties. Summarizing what he has mentioned, this table exactly shows the big changes. For properties above $1.5 million, the tax rate now is slightly higher. And for properties above $3 million, there's yet a further tier of buyer stamp duty. But do you catch what DPM Wong has actually shared? He says that 15% of properties are worth more than $1.5 million and are going to be impacted. So actually not every property is $1.5 million and above, huh? only 15%. And they are almost entirely from the private property market. I've done a calculation to show the impact to you. If you're looking to buy a $3 million landed home, for example, right away now, you have to pay $15,000 more in buyer stamp duty. The impact has already started. It's not in 2024. It starts as of 15 February. And just to quantify things, previously the tax was $104,600. With the new changes, it is going to be $119,600 if you buy a $3 million property. And if you buy a $5 million property, the difference between the previous regime and the regime right now is that you pay $65,000 more in buyer stamp duty. So the break even price for properties are yet again going to get higher. I think this is not really a cooling measure. But it's definitely a number that you need to keep in mind if you are looking to move houses in your wealth building journey. And let's move on to another subject, which is not really a new tax, but really a cut in relief from this budget 2023. And that's actually impacting working mother's child relief. So if you're also a high income mother, pay attention, this segment might really impact you. I've actually mentioned previously in the article on my website, The Assume Parent, that in back in August 2017, there was an implementation of relief cap of $80,000. And my conclusion then was it targets high income moms the most. Because a working mom who is earning $200,000 in terms of salary could be paying no tax if they had four children. The previous formula was 15% on first child, 20% on second child, third child onwards, 25%, which means four children, 85% of the tax bill. But with the implementation of this relief cap of $80,000, the full power of the working mother child relief is reduced. Right now, if you look in terms of the right-hand side table, you realize that the new working mother child relief is $8,000 flat for first child, $10,000 for second child, and $12,000 for third child onwards. That is a flat amount rather than a percentage of income. And IRAS has actually an example. This mother with annual earned income of $15,000 and has rental income of $30,000 is going to be impacted in this way. Before I get further, I think this example is quite extreme. There are very few low-income moms with an investment property. But let's see what he's going to say. 
With this new working mother child relief, it does help middle and lower income mums to get more in terms of relief. So in this example, this mom is now getting 15,000 worth of relief. It really highlights the power of fixing the amount rather than percentage. And to a large extent, I actually support it because in my opinion, every working mom deserves to get a good tax relief. That's why I told my wife, maybe she needs to start contributing SRS again. But that's when I started to read on the fine print and realized this. It's mentioned that there's no change to working mother child relief for moms who have kids from 1st of January 2024 onwards. Existing working moms who are enjoying the percentage terms will remain dead. Wow, so that means there's no impact to my wife unless we have a third kid. Then the first two kids will be on the percentage term. The third kid will be on the $12,000 fixed relief formula. So if you're also a working mom, maybe this is good news for you. With the taking portion out of the way, let's now move to the giving portion of things. You know, it's going to be cash for all adults from the age of 21 and above. And don't worry, just in case you are age of 20, not yet 21. Budget 2024, I bet there'll be cash given also to adults because GST is going up to 9%, correct? So you will get your share of things. Medisafe is also given to young children and elderly. And if you'd like to see in terms of when these monies are going to be disbursed to you, this is a quick snapshot from CNA. As always, if you are well off enough, maybe don't put too much mental energy to it. If it comes along, you'll come and government will find a way to credit it directly to you. So let's discuss on the key important parts that really moves the needle. And that's the first part, which comes from property grants. This is also where I'm saying that, you know, if you're high income single, then maybe there's just not too much that is going to be given to you. There is some increment in grants. If you are buying a HDB in single, but of course, there are income qualifying criteria. Families are the ones that are going to get a lot more when they buy resale flats. Four room resale flat again, don't buy five room. The grant can be up to $80,000. There's also increment for proximity housing grant. So do always buy a flat near your parents. Take every opportunity to tap on the maximum grants that you can get. By the way, parents can also get this proximity housing grant when they buy a flat near their children. If they decide to, for example, sell their flat and downgrade and move nearer to their kids. So do take note of this strategy. The second part of giving comes from babies. And you know, just when I told my family that I'm actually quite happy with two kids ready, more money is dangled again for baby born after this budget announcement. You realize that families are going to be given $11,000 for the first and second child. For the third child, it's $13,000 in cash gift. Do take note again, this giving is progressive. They intend to give all the way up to primary school. Not just that, they are also increasing. Money is given to CDA account. Take note again, there are two parts to it. First is the first step grant, whereby there are some low-income families who can't afford to contribute any monies to their child's CDA account. That's why this free money is directly given. It's a grant given. This grant will now be increased to $5,000. Then there's that matching portion to tap on also, especially if you have cash savings that can pump into your child's CDA. This will be increased for first child to $4,000 matching and for second child, $7,000 matching. And last but not least, increase in paternity leave from two weeks to four weeks. What? I missed out on that. You know, back in 2020, I didn't have a nanny. I was working day and night and at night, I was sleeping few hours with disrupted sleep because newborn, but that's expected. I almost overworked myself and I really wish I could get four weeks of further day leave us. So I think government has actually heard feedback because many young couples have suggested that before. And I'm actually happy that fathers are now being rewarded also to stay back at home and really help out in the child's first few weeks coming into the family. To new fathers out there, I'd like to suggest I survive without any. I think it was hard, but it also prepared me a lot to take care of a newborn and gives me the confidence to bring out a newborn on myself and that really comes with hands-on experience so now with four weeks of paternity leave do consider that maybe don't need any fight the battle together in mommy and it'll be an experience with that let's move on to cbf changes which affects many of us but maybe not everybody you know previously cpf contribution is kept out at six thousand dollars which means if you're earning seven thousand money salary there was 1,000 that didn't attract CPF contribution by your employer. Do note also that this CPF contribution is also capped up by something called an annual wage ceiling of $102,000. The formula for it is 17 months times $6,000. That is why if you earn more than $6,000 
and have a bonus yearly of more than $30,000, then you'll also have received about the maximum you can get from CPF contributions from your employer already because of this annual wage ceiling. And that's why I suspect many companies right now are paying a higher base pay and not giving bonus at all. This seems to be a very common structure, higher base pay with zero bonus. And one reason is that companies can actually save on CPF contributions because again, the cap is $6,000. This could be a group that really benefits from this change. Moving forward up to 2026, government will be raising the CPF monthly salary ceiling up to $8,000 and they'll be doing so in four steps. My guess is that 2023 is one step to 6,005, then 7,000, then 7,005, and finally in 2026, $8,000. So if indeed you are having higher income but no bonuses, this could be something that really attracts a bit more money to your CPF for your own retirement. This change is good and I have this prediction to share with you. You know this maximum annual limit of $102,000 was actually done up in 2016. Previously, it was only $85,000, which is the formula of 17 months times $5,000. Could government raise this annual wage limit this year or not to $8,000 times 17 months, which is $136,000? One shot, increase the annual wage limit, or instead wait until 2026 to increase this annual wage limit. And the reason is because if they increase it in four steps, every year this annual wage limit increases. There's just going to be a lot of system changes and a lot of communication to the public on how to interpret that. So my guess is they could increase this one shot to 136,000 this year or delay it all the way until 2026 to increase it. Those are my thoughts and my predictions, not financial advice. As always, if you have benefited, smash the like button and press on subscribe, especially if you like content like this that helps you in your retirement planning. And since you start with me to here, I have a further prediction to make. That if indeed the annual wage limit increases, I think the SRS is also due for an increment. The SRS formula is actually 15% of base limit, which is again $102,000 from 1st of January 2016. Currently, the SRS cap is $15,300. There's no confirmed changes yet, but as what I predicted just now, this could change this year or in 2026. So let's stay tuned to it and see whether it does indeed come true or not. Thank you for watching you here. As always, if you like content on CPF, I've actually this to share with you. Seven ways to maximize your CPF. If you haven't seen that, I'd like to invite you there too. Take care as always. Goodbye.